Hey, it's Dr. Jay Tita, and welcome to Metabolic Living's Immunity Upgrade Blueprint. In today's lecture, we are going to be talking about why your environment matters so much and also how to make manipulations and considerations around your social circle. Now, remember, the best defense is a strong immune system, and you get a stronger immune system by developing a stronger, healthier, more resilient metabolism because the metabolism is what provides the energy for the immune system so it can do its job fighting microbes like bacteria, fungus, and viruses. Let's get into the lecture. The first thing you need to understand very clearly is that your surroundings, your people, and your purpose have an impact on your metabolism and your immune system. In other words, if your surroundings are cluttered, if they are messy, if they are causing overwhelm and agitation, that is not good. Same goes for your people. And the purpose part of this is really about do you have a reason to do what you are doing. In other words, do you know why very clearly you're wanting to get in shape, develop a strong immune system, and a resilient, lean physiology? That is important to understand. Let's get into this a little bit more. This is something that most people would not think is going to play a role, but our brains, when it sees clutter out in the environment, our brains will also clutter. This has an impact on our ability to know what to do, and do it even if we do know what to do. And so we're not saying that everyone's kitchen is going to look like this, but what we are saying is that you want to take some considerations around the fact that your surroundings are gonna have an impact on whether you're going to be able to do the things you set out to do in the first place. And so there is some organization around this. We want to make sure that you're considering the fact that your environmental circumstances, what we call your practicals, your job situation, the people you hang out with, your home environment, the clutter, the overwhelm, the to-do list, all of these things, the, the TV, the snack bar, all of that kind of stuff, the alcoholic drinks in the cabinet, all the things that are not necessarily in your control because you come into an environment with people in that environment. However, you do exert some control, and that's what we're trying to say here. Plan to get these things in control. Think about what you are going to be doing. Think about where your meals are going to be. Think about how you're going to be structuring those things. This is very similar to putting together a to-do list and an intention sort of plan. This is what I'm going to do. This is what time I'm going to eat. This is the things I'm going to make sure I'm paying attention to. I'm going to make sure I clean up my environment, and I'm going to make sure I control all the things I can to the best degree that I can. Now, the fact of the matter is, once you get that down, you and I both know that the perfect day rarely, if ever, happens. And so, you may say, okay, Jade, I've got my home environment taken care of. However, and even my work environment is great, but when I travel, things are different. When the kids are home with me, things are different than when the kids are not home with me. When I am ill or under stress, those things are different. And so one of the things I want to help you understand is you don't need one plan. One plan is not good enough because you have too many things going on, too many differences. And so what you really need is a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. And so you have your maintenance plan Hopefully, if you don't, you need to start building it. That's part of what this 30 days is introducing you to. How to understand your own metabolism, how to read your metabolism, and how to start to create a lifestyle that works for you rather than against you. But even when you find that, it won't be the perfect plan all the time. You need a separate plan, a plan B when you're traveling. You need a plan C when you get very busy. You need a plan D when you are overstressed, overwhelmed, or you only got two nights of sleep or two hours of sleep the night before. You need a plan on the weekend if that is different than what you do during the weekday. This is absolutely critical. So the point that I'm making here to you is that what I want you to start thinking about in this lecture is I want you to start thinking about what is my base plan, my maintenance plan, then what am I going to do on the weekend? What am I going to do when I'm stressed? What am I going to do when I'm sleep deprived? What am I going to do when I'm traveling? And you should be developing alternate plans so that you can quickly pivot when you need to. The other thing you need to understand is that 
people matter as well. There are different people in your life. And what you're looking at here is a battery. I want you to think of the left side as the positive side and the negative side as the negative side. We don't oftentimes think about this, but your social circle is either going to give you a net positive charge or a net negative charge. People in your life are either going to give you a net positive or a net negative charge. And so there are several different aspects that I want you to think about this social battery. First of all, there are what we would call tribe members. These are people in your inner circle, people in your inner circle who help you, who you love to have. This would be your closest friends, your family members, the people who understand you. They got your back. They take good care of you. The people who really do matter, the ones that their opinions really matter. Then there are what we would call the empty audience. These are people who are in your sphere. Maybe they're on their social, maybe they're uh, on your social media feeds, maybe they're uh, coworkers and peers at work, maybe they're in-laws and things like that that you're not necessarily super close with. And their opinions have an impact on you, but they're really not your close tribe. And the first thing you want to do here is think about, okay, who are the people who really charge me up, who I know just by them being in my circle, give me a sense of stability and calm and make me feel more certain and stable versus the individuals who make me feel less certain, less stable, who I really shouldn't be putting a lot of my energy into. That's the first insight you need to have. The next insight is you want to understand who are the people in your world who are believers and haters. We all know what this is like. You come up with a new idea. You say, hey, I thought about doing this new challenge, this get immunity upgrade challenge with Dr. Jade Tita. And the believers are going to be like, oh, my God, I want to do it with you. Nice job. What are you doing? I can't wait. So good for you. How's it going? They're going to ask about it. They're going to be supportive of it. They're going to maybe you know, help you along on the way and maybe give you reminders and say, hey, did you get your workout in? Hey, do you want to go for a walk with me, right? They're, they believe that you can do it. And then there's the haters who hate everything. It's like, what are you doing that for? Why would you do that? You don't have time for that. And they'll even pick apart you trying to do it, right? We all know these types. Now, some of them mean well, but these are personality types. What you want to do is you want to be building more believers into your life and less haters. Likewise, you have counselors and vampires. Counselors are people who, when you're overwhelmed, when you are having difficulty, when you have tough decisions to make, when you're worried about finances, when you're worried about things or need some good advice, counselors are going to be the people that say, you know what, you might want to try this or that. There are people that you can go to that will give you good quality advice. Vampires are kind of the opposite. They're the ones who will drain you. They were the ones that might even cause problems for you. They may, may be some of the stress that you're going to the counselors for. Now, of course, this could be a paid professional counselor, but it's wonderful if your social circle has lots of counselors in it. Coaches versus enablers. We know what these are like. There are some people who you just tend to eat better around. You tend to work better, work out more when you're around them. You tend to feel healthier and more vital when you're in their presence. Maybe you go for walks and, you know, drink green juices and, and you know, coffee dates and you know, self-development type of things with these people. They make you better physically and psychologically versus the enablers who are just like, hey, you want, you know, I know you like sweets. Here are some sweets. It's like my sister is one of the ones in my life who's an enabler. She loves me to death, and they're oftentimes meaning well, but I love sweets, and she likes to give me sweets. I love wine, and she makes sure that there's always wine available for me. And so we want to be very honest about, okay, when I'm trying to get in shape, do the things that I need, I need to be aware of the enablers. And what's great about enablers is oftentimes they're some of our closest people, and they love us. So if you'll just enroll them, they can easily become coaches. And then finally, Finally, there's this idea of sort of mentors versus victims. Mentors are these people who um, inspire you and motivate you and have this educational sort of way of sort of pushing you along. And so they really help you to kind of get to where you want to go, to make you feel like you're making progress and that there's they, you can lean on them for, uh, you know, good quality sort of inspiration and motivation and say they blaze the path then you know I can do it as well these are the kind of next level people in our lives that we look up to and then you have the victims and these are the people who are sort of the opposite of that they blame they complain they they have this sort of negative energy this sort of 
fog cloud that follows them around everywhere and sort of drains you and your energy. Now, the idea here is just for you to start sort of understanding that there are different people that come into your life. And what I want you to do in this exercise is I want you to write down the top 20 or 30 people who you are in contact with most of the time. I want you to imagine that you are a professional sports team manager and that you are going to recruit and build the best team to make it to the championship. And you need to know who the people are on your team. And then you need to put them in the right categories. You need to know, are they a net positive, a net negative? You need to know, do I need to cut them? Do I even have them in the right category? This is what you want to be thinking about. So I want you to write down these 30 people. And I'll give you a little bit of an example from my world. And I'll use my sister because she's really interesting and wonderful. On the one hand, she's a tribe member. She's someone I care very deeply about. She is someone who's in my inner circle. And I really um, just adore her and love her. She also is a believer. So I would put her in the tribe category and the believer category. She's not really into health and fitness, and she loves to give me wine and cookies like I talked about, so I put her in the enabler category there. She doesn't really fit into the counselor or the vampire sort of place there, nor the mentor or the victim place necessarily. So she's in my tribe. She's one of my believers. She's also one of my enablers. She's definitely a net positive for me, but she does show up in one of these negative sort of categories. And so that tells me something right there about my sister, right? When I'm trying to eat good and get in shape and stick to my diet and be, you know, sort of that way. I don't want to go to her house because I know she's going to try to feed me cookies and I may have difficulty with that. And so I want you to go through this exercise and put all your people in these categories, realizing that sometimes they can be a believer and a hater. Like if Jody, my sister, was a believer in me and loved my dreams, but also on occasion could be a contrarian and sort of hate on me, I could put her in both places. Now, the point is right away, once you feel this out, you're going to see some very clear things begin to happen. You might see that you have a ton of people in the negative column in general and not a whole lot of people in the positive column. You might see individuals who are really negative and not very positive. And you may see any number of sort of other sort of categories here. The idea though is, is to start saying, I either need to start putting up boundaries and change my relationship with some of these people or recruit more positive individuals. This is how you begin to manage some of your planning, making sure you have multiple plans. And this is also how you start to manage some of your social energy. This stuff matters, and it matters a lot for your metabolism and your immune system. So let's do some key takeaways. You need different plans for different realities. You need to also understand your current social support system. Is your social support net negative or net positive? And are the people in your social circle really creating a winning social team for you, or do you need to rearrange these? In future lectures, we'll talk a little bit about how to manage some of these social dynamics. But for now, thanks so much for watching. You can still join and access all the materials over at MetabolicLiving.com. Remember, we've got free immune strengthening workouts, meal plans, and recipes there. And remember, this is program agnostic. It does not matter if you're vegetarian or vegan, keto or paleo. We've got you covered. Now, if you've enjoyed this lecture, please, please, please share it with anybody who you think will benefit. Don't forget to follow us at Metabolic Living on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And please remember, we're all in this together. It's about boosting your metabolism, strengthening your immune system, and flattening the curve for all of us. Thanks for being here at today's lecture. We will see you at the next session.